Hey, I'm Steve from Number 12 Cider with uh, my business partner Colin here. Today we're going to talk about kegging. Uh, this is going to be a quick tutorial on kegging, mostly just to give you an overview of what it's all about. Uh, the important reason that we're offering this one today is because we think kegging is a really important tool to advance your cider making craft. Uh, what are a couple of the reasons why it's really good to learn how to keg, Colin? Well, it's, uh, it's easier. Uh, you know, if you refer to our past videos about uh, bottle conditioning and back sweetening in the bottle and stabilizing, that gets a little complicated at times. This is pretty easy. It's a matter of filling the keg and carbonating it and drinking it. And it's faster. You get carbonation. If you want carb, this is all about carbonation. If you want carbonation, this is a faster way to get to that point. And one other reason, Colin, is this is a good way to back sweeten your cider without worrying about the, the possibility of the re-ferment that we discussed in a couple of our previous videos. As we mentioned before, uh, when we're bottle conditioning, when we're bottling and carbonating in the bottle, we're using the live yeast to ferment some of that sugar out and create that pressure. And as we've also discussed before, if you want to back sweeten your product, you can't really do that with live yeast because it wants to eat all that sugar and could create an explosive situation in the bottles, but um, also makes it a lot more complicated. In this case, with, with a keg, you could potentially back sweeten and simply refrigerate your keg, making the yeast really slow moving. Uh, and that allows you enough time to drink it without a problem or you could keg your product and add something to neutralize the yeast, such as sorbate and sulfate, sulfite, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's just a matter of, it stops the yeast from reproducing, so you're not gonna get that same effect. It's not gonna re-ferment in the keg. Yeah, it's one so of Colin's kind of the expert on carbonation here, uh, but right now I'll just, I'll go over for you uh, what it basically you need for, for kegging, okay? So we've got the, the, the basic components right here. Uh, this right here is a CO2 tank, carbon dioxide. You can get uh, a tank like this and get it refilled at uh, various places. Uh, for us, we get it at our local homebrew supply store called Northern Brewer. Uh, and so we regularly buy these and replace them as needed. Um, this thing is called a regulator. A regulator is something that we use to uh, put a measured amount of pressure into the uh, keg. So you're gonna need a regulator. You're gonna need these hoses that connect your uh, CO2 tank and regulator to your keg. And then you're gonna need one of these kegs. Uh, these kegs are called Cornelius kegs or corny kegs. Uh, they were originally used in the, the, old, the old crappy looking ones, like this one, <laughs> were originally used for soda. But you can also buy new Cornelius kegs now. Why are we using this kind of keg as opposed to the traditional keg you're familiar with? It's because you need to have the ability to get inside of that keg without special tools. So this is an empty, more or less empty Cornelius keg. And you'll notice that this has a lid, the top, you can actually open this up, remove the lid, and that, that becomes useful if you want to clean the inside of the keg or if you want to fill the keg with your cider. So that is the key component of a Cornelius keg that makes it very useful. These other two components are knobs. One of them is for drawing out cider, and it, has a, it actually has a hose attached to it that goes right to the bottom of the keg. And the other one is the one we're going to use to to inject the keg with carbon dioxide, right? That sounds right. If you're taking it apart to clean it or fill it, make sure that you uh, reattach everything, it's all secure, because uh, you'll be putting pressure on that keg from this tank, and uh, you'll find out in a hurry if you didn't uh, secure something. Yeah, so it's important for you to know a little bit more about these connections and the components of your keg to know more than we've just talked about. Uh, you don't want to have your CO2 leaking out because that's 
not going to be effective in making your cider carbonated. And you don't want to have your cider leaking out either, because then you won't be able to drink it. <laughs> so at this point, uh, let's say we have uh, filled our keg. We have cider in there. Uh, what, do we, what do we need to decide? Well, uh, in terms of back, back sweetening? Uh, well, okay, let, okay let's, let me back up. So uh, let's say we have a finished cider that we like and we're ready to drink it. Uh, we want to put it inside the keg. Let's say we've done that. Uh, we've put some back sweetening in. Maybe this time it's in the form of some juice concentrate, sweeten it up a little bit, just to our liking. So we now have a cider in there that's ready to drink, except we need some carbonation, right? So we now need to decide what level of carbonation do we want in our finished cider? Uh, you and I tend to like something that's a little bit higher sparkle. Uh, not overly so, but you know, maybe a medium high sparkle. Something in the, uh, you know, gives it a little bit of mouthfeel, gives it a nice uh, uh, appearance. Uh, so that's what we're gonna shoot for. So the, re the, thing, the thing that is uh, important when you're shooting for a particular carbonation level, two things you need to know we have a chart for this and we'll show you that, but the two things you need to know is what's the temperature of your cider and how much pressure are you putting on the cider with your CO2? And I'll just say right now about temperature, this should be refrigerator temperature. Refrigerator temperature is the way you carbonate cider or beer. If you don't have the product refrigerated, it's not gonna be very easy to carbonate because CO2 stays in the liquid solution at a cold temperature and it releases from the liquid solution at a higher temperature. So we're gonna start with the assumption that everybody uh, has the ability to refrigerate their keg and they're gonna get their keg to the same temperature as our refrigerator, 38 degrees. Sounds right. All right? Mm -hmm. So Colin, if I've got my cider in the keg and refrigerated to 38 degrees and I want a good solid, medium sparkle, a medium level carbonation. Uh, I connect my CO2 tank using one of these hoses and connecting it to the gas. And I use this knob to adjust the pressure. Right. What pressure am I looking for and what happens next? Well, uh, there's lots of methods. We're gonna tell you uh, one of the simplest methods, maybe the most reliable method. Um, some of the other methods uh, tend to be trickier uh, or less, you can't pinpoint exactly what you want as easily. Uh, so what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to talk to you about uh, what we say is a medium sparkle. Uh, we like to use this carbonation chart. Uh, this is some basic chart you can get on the internet. This one uh, very simply is uh, put out by Zaman Nagel uh, for detecting carbonation. And it has a, a couple simple variables, right? As you mentioned them already. Uh, one of which is temperature. Uh, on this chart, and we know that our cider is at 38 degrees. It's been in the fridge uh, for a long enough period of time to equalize, right? So 38 degrees is already taken care of for us. Uh, we're gonna look at another factor on here, which is uh, how many volumes of pressure do we wanna put on that? And uh, volumes is another thing to probably look into. We won't get too much into the details, but it has to do with uh, uh, the amount of pressure we're putting on there. So. Uh, what we like in our medium sparkle is about 2.75 volumes. That's what we're going to target today, 2.75 volumes. And if we do that at 38 degrees, I can just look on my chart, and I can find that it's recommending that we put 14 pounds per square inch, or 14 PSI, of pressure onto that tank. So we're going to be thinking now about putting 14 PSI from here through the regulator into this keg to carbonate. And as simple as that, then we're gonna turn this gauge till the uh, gauge says 14 PSI. Yep. And it's connected to here, we've got it, it's not leaking, and we're gonna put that in the refrigerator yeah. for about a week. And, and, when, and when that week is over, we're gonna have our desired medium sparkle, 2.75 volumes. You can look into volumes it's a scientific term. Basically 2.75 is a good medium high sparkle and that's what we like and that's what we're going for. And what's gonna happen is this regulator will not push in at 15 or 16 PSI. 
Therefore, I know I'm not putting too much carb on this. So at some point, when that 14 PSI equalizes with the liquid that's in the tank here, uh, we should have the exact target of what we started with, which is 14 PSI at 38 degrees. Yeah, so now, one thing that a lot of people have for using home kegs is uh, a fun little thing we call a kegerator. And that is, uh, that is a converted refrigerator or a custom made unit where you put the keg in and it's got hoses that come out to a tap. Uh, but you know what, there's a lot more basic way to do this uh, and, and that's what we're gonna do right now. Yes. This, is, uh, this is another way to tap your keg. Now, you've, you've let it sit for uh, seven days in the refrigerator, 14 PSI. Let me just tell you, 14 PSI is too much pressure to serve your cider. So before you serve it... Careful. <laughs> if you, unless you want it to shoot out like a fire hose, you're gonna turn down the pressure and release a little bit of pressure on the head so that you don't have 14 PSI pushing cider out. Then once you've done that, well, wait, what do we want it at? It may be something oh, less than that, pressure. right? I mean, maybe, what, five to seven PSI? That's exactly right, Colin. See, okay. you've, I think you've done this before. Five to seven, sometimes 10. You know, if you have a long line running from your keg to the tap handle, you might need more pressure. If you've got a really short line like this, then you might not need much pressure at all. In this case, we've got it set at five, We've got our finished cider. It sat in the fridge for a week at 14 PSI. And looky there. It's carved. It's uh, pouring as you'd want to see it. Not too strong, not too weak. Uh, I'm seeing some nice bubbles in the glass right now. Uh, it looks like we hit our targets. I think we did it. 2.75 volume. This is a volume. delightful pear cider that's been sitting around for a, a while. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Now there are, that's delicious, by the way. <laughs> uh, there are other ways to carbonate uh, that might be a little faster than this. You know, some of you might be thinking, well, five to seven days, I can't wait that long. There are other things to do. Uh, you know, if you roll the keg and you put higher pressure, like 30 PSI on there, uh, you can get this done in a matter of hours in some cases. You'll see that all over YouTube. You'll see that kind of instructional where you're putting more pressure on the keg and you're rolling the keg for a period of time. Let me just tell you, same thing, repeating what Colin has said. This is the most reliable <clears throat> method of carbonating your keg at home. So, and, and the one that will pinpoint exactly what you want exactly. for carb. The other ones are a little bit of a shot in the dark. It's gonna be higher, lower than you intended. This one is, I want 2.75 volumes at 38 degrees. Give me 14 PSI and I'm there, right? And that's all there is to it. So good luck with your home caving. Cheers. <laughs>